It's Platt, and today we head to SoCal. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer today we have is the Sublime Mexican Ale. Comes to us from Ale Smith Brewing. Uh, the Sublime is the old band Sublime. This is a uh, kind of a collaboration beer between L. Smith Brewing and the band Sublime. We've done a couple of these type of beers in the past. I believe for uh, Def Leppard and I'm just drawing a blank. Uh, Def Leppard and Iron Maiden. So uh, another band beer here. Before we talk about the band though, let's talk about the brewery first. Ale Smith Brewing is located in San Diego, California. Was first founded in 1995 by a gentleman named Skip Vergilo, hopefully I'm saying that right, and Ted Newcomb. Skip was the original head brewer at Ale Smith, and they worked on a 15 barrel system, which actually for new breweries is actually a decent size system. I think in prior videos we talked about people starting with three barrels and five barrels and seven barrel systems, so 15, 15 barrel was a pretty good start. The first kind of big break uh, for the brewery came in 1998 when they released Horny Devil. Horny Devil was a golden, a Belgian golden strong ale. Started winning awards, started getting a little notoriety. If you're not familiar with the style, it's a great style of beer. I like it. I will warn you, it's a little higher ABV and it will sneak up on you. So <laughs> be careful if you jump into one of those. Um, Things started progressing, you know, were progressing ni nicely at the time. But in 2002, a gentleman named Peter Zine came in and purchased the brewery. Now, Peter and made himself head brewer. Now, Peter wasn't just a generic guy off the street with a lot of money or, you know, some guy that worked at another brewery and his uncle bought him a brewery. He wasn't that at all. Peter was a well-known home brewer at the time and also a grandmaster beer judge like... Sommiers and Cicerones are certain levels. Well, he was a grandmaster, the, the highest level. Uh, I believe at the time, the only one in San Diego County. So he was a man of quite a few skills and quite a bit of notoriety when he took over at Alesmith. One of the first things he did was create their uh, barrel program or barrel aged beer program. Now, nowadays, pretty much every brewery has that. And to a certain extent, you kind of throw one of those, at least one or two of those beers in the mix. But Back then, it was kind of groundbreaking stuff. He was really ahead of the game. Only a few people were really playing around with uh, bourbon barrels or any kind of wood aging of beer. So it was really kind of unique. And in 2003, the first release out of that program came, and it was their Speedway Stout. Still probably one of the most popular beers today, and it really caught people's attention then. Um, really started to build the momentum on the brewery until they get to 2008 when their first real big kind of almost national national wide notoriety came they went to the great american beer festival that year and won best small company and best brewery overall uh that year at the great american beer festival i've talked about the great american beer festival before it's the largest beer festival in america and it's a great place to uh, make a big splash if you're a uh, up-and-coming brewery and they sure did in 2008 well, after that, it really started to grow, really started to take off to the point where by 2015, they ended up moving out of the old brewery into a new 100,000 square foot facility. And, you know, I believe they got a restaurant, made, you know, big tap room, really grown uh, big time. Now, interestingly enough, the old brewery that they moved out of, they ended up selling to a Danish gypsy brewer named Mike Keller. We've uh, reviewed one of their beers before they did a collaboration. And the thing is about a gypsy brewer is they kind of work with different breweries and we'll use your equipment, we'll come over there, and, but they don't have a physical location. Well, I guess they decided to finally produce a, or get a physical footprint and it's in the old Alesmith Brewery. So it's nice to see that facility still being uh, used today. Real quick, review some of their beers. Uh, one of their beers is called 394 Pale Ale. The 394 is for Tony Gwynn's batting average in 1994. If you're a baseball fan, you remember that your uh, Tony had a real good shot at hitting 400. Uh, unfortunately, the season was cut short, but this beer is kind of a tribute to them. And if you go on the Ale Smith website, they reference Tony several times, including I want to say somewhere in the brewery they might have like a little, you know, uh, shrine to Tony or whatever. And I think I've talked about this beer before when we've talked about 
athlete-influenced beers. I think I mentioned this beer before. Next is their Forge Beer. It is a raspberry tart ale. I'm not a huge tart ale guy, but the beers I've tried where they've utilized raspberry, I just think raspberry works with that flavor profile. And uh, I, it actually turns a beer that I'm not a huge fan of into a beer that I actually really like. So this sounds like something pretty interesting and piqued my interest. Next is something called Stumbling Monk. The name itself already won me over. But it is actually a barrel-aged beer that is aged in bourbon barrels, cognac barrels, and red wine barrels. And I think that's very interesting because those are very kind of unique flavors unto themselves. So it'd be interesting to see how that beer picks up those different flavors from those different barrels. Um, I like that bit of creativity and changing the wood. It's not just, well, we'll buy some old Jack Daniels barrels and we'll just you know, constantly use that all the time. I, I, I like that idea of the different uh, types of barrels. And last but not least, it's not a beer in particular, but something they do called the Order of the Anvil. It is their kind of beer of the month club, but it's not, you know, it's not something you're mailing off or whatever. It's, it's their beers, and you basically get early access to some of their special releases. I was online looking. They really have some cool stuff. It, it appears coming out this year and as a member you kind of get first access to that which is kind of cool there's also member only dinners you know discounts on swag what have you so uh i think it's something really cool they do and i wouldn't be shocked if i see more breweries do in the future well before we try this particular beer though let's check out the stats okay so before i try the beer let's talk about the band sublime itself uh, I'm going to say if you're under 40 and over 60, you might not know who they are. But if you're in that range from 40 to 60, you probably remember the band. They were popular in the late 90s. Um, they were founded in 1988 in Long Beach, California. Um, they were kind of a reggae, rock, ska, punk kind of a combination that was, that was popular at the time in the late 90s. Uh, no doubt if you... If you're Gwen Stefani fans, you know, that kind of ska thing was uh, really hip in the late 90s. And Sublime was one of those uh, popular bands of that particular genre. Uh, their hits include uh, What I Got, Santeria, Wrong Way. Uh, unfortunately for the band, they actually broke up before they kind of hit the big time. What had happened was in 1996, their lead singer, Brantley Noel, died of a heroin overdose. Uh, unfortunately, in the 90s, that was kind of a thing with musicians. Uh, but they'd already, they'd already recorded their next album, and it, it was released the next year, 1997, and it had those hits. So the hits kind of started coming, but the band had already kind of dissolved because they'd lost their lead singer. And I guess they didn't want to you know, replace them like some other bands have done in the past. Uh, I believe the other members have gone on and do some collaboration work and stuff like that. But as far as Sublime itself, they were done. Uh, like I said, the hits count came afterwards. Uh, they're still though highly thought of in those particular musical genres. And like I said, if you're in that 40s, 50s kind of time range, you still think highly of them. Uh, and they really exemplified the kind of laid back Southern California vibe. Um, like I said, they're from Long Beach. There was a lot of kind of vague pot references and stuff in their, their music. Also, too, uh, the lead singer Bradley, his dog, Lou Dog, kind of became their mascot. And you'd see him in videos and at concerts and stuff. So, again, just real cool, uh, laid-back uh, vibe to the band. And, again, good music. And, unfortunately, just uh, was kind of taken away from us too soon. But... Uh, we can still go back and enjoy it, and we can also enjoy the beer. I believe it was Bradley's wife that collaborated with Ale Smith on this beer. So, well, that being said, let's try out this beer. Uh, like I said, this beer, um, particular beer, is a Mexican lager. I believe on the style sheet they call it a Vienna lager. So, let's. All right. Plenty of effervescence. Uh, Nice white head, slight haze to it. Color-wise, it does have a, a, a little deeper gold uh, to it. And just, um, thank goodness we got the light. Looking at it, it's a little deeper gold. There's a little haze to it. So, 
uh, kind of more of those classic Vienna lagers tend to be a little darker style of beer, kind of more toward the, the Bach end. But you, again, you can see there's a little, some darker malts in there, you can just tell. A little on the nose. Oh, that smells pretty kind of straight, classic Mexican lager. Even though it's in a can, it still ha it has a bit of that funk that you would get in some classic uh, cleared bottle Mexican lagers. Let's give it a try. Well, that's nice. That's real nice. I smell a little funk on my nose, but not a lot of it comes out in the taste. Um, got a little, it's, it has more malt in it than a generic lager. So I can see, again, why it's more of a Vienna lager. More malt, more kind of the dark malt. Uh, more in the toasty range than, than you're getting into the burnt and the caramel and water. This is more just like a toasted uh, grain kind of taste to it. Um, no real hop nose or whatever, but it is balanced. Bodies lighter in. It's still has more body than your Bud Light, Miller Light, or whatever, but this is still a very easy drinking beer. Um, we are at 6%, though, so that could be, um, like I said, this drinks like a lighter lager, but 6%, that might start sneaking up on you, so just, just a word of warning there. Finish is nice, goes down easy. Very nice, simple drinker. Again, something I can totally envision. Being on the beach at San Diego with a good puppy dog on a walk or throwing the Frisbee or whatever and knock you back two or three of these, I don't think you could go wrong there. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you need questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.